Hi folks, it's Rob White again here at Dahlstrom Roll Farm, and we're gonna talk about part two of the four part series on the anatomy of a roll forming line. Part two is the pre-punching process. And the, I de define the pre-punching process as two separate things happening here. Uh, the first is we're taking the strip of, of steel from the coil and we're, and we're sending it through a coil straightener. Now, what, when coils of steel are created, they have a certain amount of defect uh, cat categorized as three different types of defect. There's bow. Bow is created by the sheer fact that the steel is in a coil. The bow at the beginning of the coil is less because the diameter is larger. As it gets closer to the center, the, the bow becomes more because of that natural curvature of that coil. There's also camber. Camber is created sometimes in the slitting process and it tends to have the strip go left or right when it's coiled. The third potential defect is twist. You can, you can imagine twist like a ribbon. If you had a ribbon and you were twisting it, that could happen to the coil. The straightening process uses a series of rollers inside this unit to gradually massage the stresses both horizontally and, and, and uh, transversely from that strip before it enters the process. And it just takes, it, it takes a few more variables out of, you know, what we have to do to come up with a quality part. So you can see here, this is a straightener. You, the coils are inside. We can change the amount of, of, of coil pressure we put on with those rollers to end up with a, uh, a nice flat sheet going into the, into the pre-punching process. So let's move to the pre-punching process next. Part two of the uh, pre-punching process is, of course, a press that puts features into the flat stock. After it's been uncoiled and straightened, it comes into this process. And what's happening here is we have a control system that watches every component in the line and makes sure that all the speeds are maximized and that all the triggering happening for each step is control. We use AMS controls on our line. They're the premier control provider for roll forming in the US. And what we have here is a feeder. Now what this does is there's two pinch rolls that come together on the strip and they very accurately position that strip underneath the die so that the pattern that is eventually needed for the final part is very precise. And we're talking about positioning here within five thousandths of an inch. And the rollers can be different materials. They can be steel, they can be, they can be knurled, they can be rubber, um, depending on the material and how we have to uh, treat the surface dimension. But what's happening is once the material is positioned, the press stroke makes a hit and the material stops for that moment. That's why we need the slack loop in the beginning and we're gonna have a slack loop after the, after the punching as well. The die is pneumatically controlled with features. So if in this die, we've got a die that's about 30 inches wide by about four feet long. And there are different features in that die that we turn on and off with this control system so that the patterns can be flexible. We will move the strip and we'll hit two or three punches. We'll move the strip again. We'll turn those off. We might hit two or three other ones. And that, that combination of patterns is what creates the flexibility in the, uh, the pre-punch. So you can see, very accurately punched, heading to the next uh, process, which is the actual roll forming. And again, using a slack loop to control the material and, and trigger when a punching happens while the roll form mill is moving continuously. Now the next step is going to be the actual forming process, roll forming mill.